Greetings everyone. In this video I will talk about a recent paper about the role of sleep physiology and related translational discrepancies in the study of rapid acting antidepressant drugs. In short, the key point is whether we have truly considered sleep and other physiological variables in the translational study of rapid acting antidepressant drugs like ketamine. Stay tuned and I will explain what I mean in more detail. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala, I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. Today I'll be giving a quick perspective on a recent study by Alitalo and colleagues, uh, where I'm also a co-author. The study is called A Wake-up Call – Sleep Physiology and Related Translational Discrepancies in Studies of Rapid-Acting Antidepressants. To get you on the right track, let me explain why I'm talking about sleep physiology and rapid-acting antidepressants. And most importantly, how we got interested in this particular topic. First of all, depression is frequently associated with sleep problems. Clinical improvement often coincides with the normalization of sleep architecture and the realignment of circadian rhythm. Second, there are treatments like sleep deprivation, which produce rapid antidepressant outcomes in depressed patients, demonstrating the confluence of sleep and mood. Third, there are new research lines suggesting that drugs like ketamine may have effects on sleep and circadian rhythm and that these mechanisms could be involved in how these drugs produce their antidepressant effects. If you're interested to delve deeper into some of the scientific background, I have included a reference to a recent review article that will detail some of these things better, so check it out in the description below. Now, for a moment, let's hypothesize that ketamine's effects are either modulated or dependent on sleep and circadian rhythms. Is this a question that has been properly answered in the preclinical and clinical literature? To address this question, we examined articles of rapid-acting antidepressants from 2009 to 2019. A keyword search algorithm indicated that the vast majority of these articles completely ignored sleep. As you can see in this picture, the preclinical studies are on the left and the clinical studies are on the right. The publication year is in the, in the x-axis and the number of studies each year is on the y-axis. And the blue line indicates the, uh, those studies where the keyword sleep occurred zero times. And if you look at the right end of each figure, you can see that the majority of these studies did not mention the keyword sleep. We focused on the 100 most cited studies from both the preclinical and the clinical datasets, which are, on average, studies published in respected high-impact journals. We found that out of the 100 most frequently cited preclinical and clinical research papers, 89 and 71 percent, respectively, did not mention sleep at all. To me, this suggests that sleep is not considered a parameter that could affect the outcomes of antidepressant studies. If we look at how the studies reported the circadian time of treatment administration, we can see that the majority did not disclose it at all. Out of those who disclosed these details, most preclinical studies seem to be conducted in the inactive period, or in other words, when rodents like to sleep, while clinical studies are conducted, perhaps not surprisingly, in the morning or during the day when people are awake. So, to recapitulate, in preclinical studies, treatments were administered preferentially during the inactive period, which is the polar opposite of clinical practice and research. 
It is important to understand that human and rodent sleep are not directly comparable. Rodents are nocturnal animals and they prefer to sleep during the day when the lights are on or the sun is shining. Rodents become much more active during the evening or night when the lights of the room are turned off. The question is that does this discrepancy between the bench and the bedside have an effect in our understanding of rapid antidepressant mechanisms? And the answer is we truly don't know. Funnily enough, doing rodent experiments during the inactive period would translate to waking up patients in the middle of the night. And truth be told, we don't even know whether ketamine works as an antidepressant if it is administered to humans during the night. It could very well be that sleep and circadian rhythms are not playing a crucial role in mediating the antidepressant effects of ketamine and other treatments. But just as well, it could be that they play a modulatory role or even a more important part in producing the antidepressant outcomes that are seen in clinical trials. In any case, it's hard to argue against the reporting of experimental details such as uh, circadian treatment times in experimental research. And that is exactly the point of our perspective, to encourage investigators to consider the effects of sleep and the lack of it in their experiments and in clinical practice and support research reproducibility by clearly disclosing circadian times for all experiments. Ultimately, future studies will be important to address the question of whether sleep and circadian rhythms truly play a key role in producing antidepressant effects. With that being said, I invite you to check the original publication and also to participate in the discussion in the comments down below. Also remember to subscribe to my channel and like my videos to support me making more neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.